future respiratory therapists. In this video, we're talking all about bronchodilators. That's right, it's time for a little pharmacology review. You're not gonna wanna miss this, let's dive in. All right, so as I stated, we're talking all about bronchodilators. Before we get in and start talking about today's subject matter, do me a favor, look at the video description below. There's gonna be a link in it, and it's gonna take you to this page right here where you can sign up for the free resources in Cheat Sheets class that I've created just for you so you can have free resources to help you along your way through your educational journey. Things like um, key uh, chest x-ray words, key uh, waveform analysis, abnormal findings, things like that that'll just help you um, along your journey that some of it su supports and supplements other videos. So uh, go get into that course so that you can have access to those free resources. You will also be able to find in the Respiratory Coach Academy various uh, tutorial programs and, 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 and review programs to help you be successful in various classes. One of them is indeed pharmacology, where we break down every major classification of pharmacology, formulas, ABG interpretation, the TMC bootcamp and the CSC bootcamp to help you pass those exams when you're ready to start preparing for those. But for today, like I said, we're talking all about bronchodilators. And the thing is, is that there's so many different names and you have to understand these names. You have to know where they come from. You have to know what they are telling you. Uh, there's names like sympathomimetic, parasympatholytic, anticholinergic, muscarinic antagonist, adrenergic and beta 2 agonist. There's so many, so many, it's so confusing, right? Well, there's a reason all these names exist. I'm gonna show you here right now. Now, for the sake of this video, we are only going to be focusing on not this box. This is where our focus is today, is the sympathomimetic, the adrenergic, and the beta 2 agonist. I'm going to show you what all these words mean and what drugs we're talking about in this classification. And here's what it all comes down to, okay? It all comes down to this right here. Whenever you're working with drugs, specifically bronchodilators, you have to realize that there is a system, there is a neurotransmitter, and there is a receptor. Very, very important. System, neurotransmitter, and receptor. Now you see what happens here is there is a system in the body that that releases neurotransmitters to seek out receptors. We're going to break each one of those down for you right now. Here we go. When we're talking about the system that we're, that we're talking about right now, we're talking about the sympathetic nervous system. Now, it's very important to understand what the sympathetic nervous system is. And if you recall, the sympathetic nervous system is the fight or flight response system inside of our body. In other words, um, when we get into a dangerous situation or a thrilling situation or an exciting situation, we get that adrenaline rush. We feel it and it's like, oh, you get that first ABG and your hands start shaking because your system floods itself with adrenaline. That's the sympathetic nervous system. Now, the sympathetic nervous system is designed for survival and, and, and like I said, excitement and things like that. When it's time to perform, the body says, I got you covered with the sympathetic nervous system. Now, some key things happen here, and you can make this make sense really, really simply. When the sympathetic nervous system is, is excited or, or when it is initiated, see what happens is, is the body says, okay, we need to get, we need to optimize airflow to the lungs because we need to optimize oxygen delivery to our, 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 our muscles. And so, so we can run faster, so we can perform stronger, longer during this, this, this um, flood of adrenaline, okay? So there's three primary things that happen. There's a whole lot of things that happen, okay? But for us as respiratory therapists, let's just break it down. First thing we know is that you have increased cardiac performance. So you're going to have a higher blood pressure, faster heartbeat, increased stroke volume. All those things are going to happen when the sympathetic nervous system is initiated. We are also going to get bronchodilation. 
and we're also going to get reduced um, mucus production from the mucosal glands, from the submucosal glands. Now, this should make sense, right? I mean, the heart is obvious, right? It's going to be faster, harder, so it can pump more oxygen to the, the, the muscular system. Bronchodilation and decreased mucus. Think about this. If we're trying, if the body says get more oxygen out, then it wants to open these airways up as much as possible to reduce any obstruction to incoming airflow. So bronchodilation, decreased mucus production. Now, let's think about this for just a second. Does this sound like things that we like or we don't like as respiratory therapists? Sounds like things we like, right? We want good cardiac performance. We want airways to be open and we don't want a lot of mucus production. So we like all of these things. That's a check mark. And if all of these things are the byproduct of the sympathetic nervous system doing its job, then we realize that the drugs we give need to mimic what the sympathetic nervous system does. Okay, so, so we want to mimic the sympathetic nervous system. Hence, we get the name sympathomimetic. All we did was just take sympathomimetic and we put it on the backs of it. Mimetic means to mimic. Some people remember this as saying sympathomimic. That's what we're talking about here. So that's where that word comes from. We're going to give a drug that's going to achieve the same goal as what the natural sympathetic nervous system would achieve. Now, when we go down, remember I told you it's more than that. It also goes to the neurotransmitter. So we have to talk about that. So in the sympathetic nervous system, when it is initiated, what is released is called norepinephrine. This is the neurotransmitter at the end effector site. What does that mean? Well, we're talking about in the place at the effector site means where is the change going to happen so if we're talking about if we're talking about bronchodilation then we're talking about at the smooth muscle you see we're not talking about back at the ganglionic synapsis and all that stuff we're talking about at the end where we want the effect to happen norepi is the transmitter is the neurotransmitter and so what we know is that norepi is oftentimes referred to as adrenaline. This is what we call it. We say, nobody ever says, oh, that North Epi flood. No, everybody says, oh, that rush of adrenaline was crazy. It's the same thing, okay? Now, think about this. This is where we get the word adrenergic. You see, adrenaline, adrenergic. So what do we say? We are going to utilize a drug that initiates the same effect as adrenaline, hence the word adrenergic. Now, the neurotransmitter is good, but only as good as the receptors it can find and bind to. So what we know here is, is that we have beta-1, beta-2, and alpha receptors. Now, let's just talk about these for a second. You see, these are the receptors that the neurotransmitter is looking to bind to within the specific system. So if we go back three steps, we go like this. Sympathetic nervous system releases norepi, aka adrenaline, looking for one of these three receptors. Beta-1, beta-2, or an alpha receptor. Beta-1 is responsible for the increase in cardiac effects. So this is your heart. Beta-2 is responsible for bronchodilation. Hence, we're now talking about our lungs. And alpha is responsible for vasoconstriction, not, not bronchoconstriction. We're talking about constriction of the systemic vessels, vasoconstriction. So if you think about it, I'm going to write it right here, vasoconstriction. If you think about it, the alpha symbol looks like this, something like that. And if you were to pull on these, if this was a thread and we were to pull, that circle would get smaller because that's what the vessels do. When norepi finds alpha receptors, vasoconstriction. Now, how do you remember all these? 
Beta one, you have one heart, one heart. Beta two, you have two lungs. So just remember it like that. That's, that's the easiest way to remember it. And then alpha, pull on it and it constricts. Now, I don't know who to give credit to for coming up with that. I didn't come up with that. I've seen it in multiple other places. It even mentions it here in the, um, in the uh, Egan's, the latest edition, chapter 36 of the, what is this, the 13th edition? Yeah, the 13th edition. Uh, it says it right here. Uh, basically, uh, beta 1 stimulation increases the heart. Beta 2 stimulation relaxes smooth muscle to assist in differentiating these. Remember that you have one heart and you have two lungs. Beta 1 heart, beta 2 lungs. And that's how you can remember it. So these are your receptors. Now think about this. When we're talking about bronchodilation, we're not worried about this. When we're talking about bronchodilation, we're not worried about this. This is what we're trying to focus on. So that is why you will see these drugs referred to as beta-2 agonist. Beta-2 agonist. It's a drug designed to look like norepi that is seeking out a beta-2 receptor. And when it attaches, it will create the same effect as nor if you would beta 2 agonist so uh, that brings us back to here here's where it all comes down to system or when you see sympathomimetic you're talking about the system for which you are using you are mimicking the sympathetic system which we know increased bronchodilation increased cardiac performance decreased mucus we like that when you hear adrenergic it's telling you the drug looks like adrenaline and creates the same effect. That's regards to the neurotransmitter in the sympathetic nervous system, in the, in, within the sympathetic nervous system. And when you hear beta-2 agonist, this is telling you the receptor we're looking for and we want to create the same effect as the neurotransmitter. And that brings you back to your receptor. And that is why you hear drugs relating to, to bronchodilators, oftentimes as sympathomimetics, adrenergics, beta-2 agonists. And you better be able to pick up on those for when you take that exam because you have no idea which one they're going to say. Let me give you a list of drugs here real quick. Again, page 723 out of Egan's. Short-acting versus long-acting. Short-acting, the two they list here are albuterol and levalbuterol. And when you talk about long-acting adrenergic bronchodilators, and it's the same thing. So you say, well, I don't understand. Like sometimes I see, sometimes I see Saba. Well, what does Saba stand for, right? Well, Saba stands for short-acting adrenergic bronchodilator agents. I had to look at the book. I was like, wait, there should be another A in here, right? There's not, there's not. It's short-acting adrenergic bronchodilator agents. If you see LABA, it's long-acting adrenergic bronchodilator agents. And see, that's different than SAMAs and LAMAs, which are bronchodilators, but they stand for something different, which we'll talk about in another video. So I hope this makes sense. Um, that is bronchodilators as they relate to the sympathomimetics, the adrenergics, and the beta-2 agonist categories. Uh, I'm Respiratory Coach. Stay here with me right here on YouTube. Do me a favor. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. I know 50% of you are not subscribers. Hit that subscribe button for me, please. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, comment, like, all the fun stuff. Come follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and, and LinkedIn over at Joe Lewis. And then finally, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. Send me a message, an email, Whatever you want to know more information about the, the, the boot camps to help you get and pass your exam, send me an email. I'll send you all the information um, to get you along your way to becoming that registered respiratory therapist. Hey, remember at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.